Superman, the Diesel, Big Aristotle, these are just a few of the names Shaquille O'Neal acquired throughout his spectacular NBA career. He was one of, if not the most dominant force the NBA has ever seen. Today you will be seeing why we say this and six examples of why he's simply not human. And trust me, you want to stay for this last one. The Quadruple Double. This is without a doubt one of the most impossible and rare feats in NBA history. So rare in fact that it has only been accomplished four times, that's less than a handful. NBA legends such as David Robinson, Akeem Olajuwon, and Nate Thurmond, and it was almost done by Shaq in 2001. Shaq stepped up in a big way during this playoff series against the Sixers in the finals. Shaq was going up against legendary shot blocker Dikembe Mutombo. Shaq was giving Mutombo hooks, dunks of course, and getting blocks. Matter of fact, Shaq had 8 blocks. He was more Mutombo than Mutombo in this game. There was a sequence where he got two back-to-back -back blocks in one play. He also blocked Allen Iverson this one, and it was vicious. There was nothing stopping Shaq from doing what he does best, making his presence known. His final stat line was 28 points, 20 rebounds, 9 assists, and 8 blocks. Age didn't affect Shaq, and this next performance is living proof of that. Ironically, we will be starting the second game on this list with the last 40 point game of his career. The reason this one is so impressive is simply because of Shaq being 37 in 2009 and Raptors star Chris Bosh being his competition. It's not often Shaq matches up against a fellow Hall of Fame big man, but Chris Bosh spent seven seasons in Toronto and managed to become the leader in franchise rebounds and blocks as well. Chris Bosh was known for being an elite rim protector in his prime. So for Shaq to go up against him and manage to drop the numbers he did, well, it was truly a special performance. Shaq wound up making Bosh look like a child after dropping 45 points on the Raptors as a role player. Some of these highlights were just filthy. So dominant that Chris Bosh had this to say after the game when asked if there was anything they could do to stop Shaq. Put it simply, said there was physically there was no answer for Shaq. I mean, was there anything that could have been done? Mm, we would have done it. Shaq is almost always the bigger man on the court at seven foot one, but his next opponent was six inches taller. That's right, Shaq went at it with a seven foot seven beast. Throughout the NBA's 77 year history, the league has gotten to see many matchups. Some of the best matchups have come from Giant vs. Giant Showdown. Matchups such as Wilt Chamberlain vs. Bill Russell, Giannis vs. Wembenayama, and Shaq vs. a 7 foot 7 beast named Big George. For the record, Shaq is 7 foot 1 and usually is the biggest one on the court, but this particular night he was facing a man that was 6 inches taller than him. This was literally a pick on someone your own size moment for Shaq, except, well, it would have been until Shaq dominated George from start to finish. He had his way with him all night. Picture this, it's March 22nd, 1996, and the Orlando Magic are facing off against the Washington Wizards. The game starts off with a bang. Shaq, a force to be reckoned with, is already making his presence known on the court. By the end of the first half, he's racked up 22 points, but the Wizards aren't backing down. Led by Juwan Howard, they mount an inspired run, keeping the score pretty close. Shaq would continue to back George down with ease. It was almost as if he had a point guard on him. Look at the way he was dunking on this man, over and over again. It was actually child's play for him. So much so that Shaq wound up finishing the game with 49 points, 17 rebounds, and 2 assists. Big George, on the other hand, had 8 points on 4 for 14 shooting with 5 fouls. Ah yeah, talk about an absolute stinker. What tops a performance like this for Shaq? How about dominating a prime Kings team with Chris Webber and Jason Williams? Shaq vs. the Kings is a tale as old as time. He could summarize this one for you all by himself. What's that? <laughs> Barbecue chicken alert! Barbecue chicken alert! Everyone and everything are much smaller than Shaq. Even in a league filled with giants, Shaq was the strongest of them all, arguably. Therefore, for this game versus the Kings, Shaq would literally shoot over anyone, and it worked out every single time as Shaq shot 63% from the field. It felt like Shaq didn't see a single bad shot during that night versus the Kings. 
During one of these plays, Shaq even loses his shoe during a shot and still makes it, then runs up the court and uh, holds his shoe while he does it. Imagine seeing this kind of stuff in game. It's just ridiculous. Yet the Kings were fighting and keeping this one a close game overall. It was truly a fun head-to-head -head matchup with Shaq and Kobe versus Jason Williams, who was pretty darn good at the time, and Chris Webber. Shaq wound up finishing the game 46 points, 17 rebounds, and 4 blocks. This monster dunk left everyone in the arena in awe. This dunk was Shaq literally putting the nail in the coffin. Not many performances can top this, but in this next game, Shaq takes it to another level in the NBA Finals. It's Game 6 of the 2000 NBA Finals, the LA Lakers are going against the Indiana Pacers, and the stakes of course are high. The Lakers haven't won an NBA title since 1988, and well, it's time to change that. The game starts and Shaq is on fire from the jump. Kobe immediately gets Shaq going with a stick pass to the diesel in the paint, and Shaq smashes the dunk in and gets the and one call. From then on, Shaq was on a tear. He scored 15 of the Lakers' 29 first quarter points, hitting 7 of 10 shots. He's dunking, doing hook shots from the free throw line, and clogging the lane defensively. He also held his counterpart, Rick Smith, who was pretty good, to 1 for 8 in the beginning of the game. As the game progressed, Shaq continued to dominate. He scored a game-high 41 points, making 19 of his 32 shots. He also grabbed 12 rebounds and put up 4 blocks. He's a force to be reckoned with, and the Pacers couldn't find an answer. But it's not just about the points. Shaq's presence on both ends of the court was a game-changer. Every time the Pacers scored, Shaq would answer. He's not waiting for help, he is the help. The other Lakers rally around him in the final few minutes to secure their 116-111 victory. This win brings the Lakers their first NBA title since 1988, and Shaq is named the unanimous Finals MVP, even with Kobe on his team, and that says all you need to know about Shaq's greatness. Shaq's performance in Game 6 of the 2000 NBA Finals is a testament to his dominance and shows the impact one player can have on a game. Very few things can top a 41 point game to win the finals, yet this next performance does that and more. It was his best game ever and scored the most points he's ever scored in a game. The year is again 2000, but we're taking you back to March 6th. This would be just like any other day for most people, but for Shaq, it was his birthday. So naturally, Shaq was just looking to celebrate. He even says it himself in an interview about this game. Well, it's my birthday. We got a party that night. I'm not doing nothing today. We playing against the Clippers. Kobe, you do it. It's so all day. I'm riding around, getting ready for the party. Boom, boom, boom. I don't even think I went home to take a shower. I think I came to the game in a sweatsuit. It was his 28th birthday, and he decided to give himself a present that no one would ever forget. Shaq was so nonchalant for most of the day, that is of course until he was denied tickets from the Clippers staff, which meant Shaq's friends that were in town for his birthday weren't allowed to enter the arena without paying. As you can guess, Shaq took major offense to this. Was charged me in the Staples Center, the center that I built. You forgot I was the one with the shovel out there with Mr. Anschutz and Tim Lywicki? But you want to charge me? Okay. All right, I got some for you, Clippers. He wound up scoring a jaw-dropping 61 points against the LA Clippers. This was some 2K stuff, except Shaq did it in real life. He was like a human wrecking ball, dunking the ball 11 times in just three quarters. For context, 11 dunks is the most dunks by a single player in one game ever. The Clippers clearly had no answer for him. He was just too strong, too skilled, too determined. Shaq just couldn't believe he was disrespected in his own home. The more he thought about this, the more he took it personally. He decided to show them whose house it really was. By halftime, he already scored 26 points, but the Lakers were only up by one. He then noticed Kareem Abdul-Jabbar on the Clippers bench and decided to do a sky hook. According to Shaq, Kareem wasn't the biggest fan. I get the ball and I throw a little sky hook. He's not looking. I said, oh, you're not going to look at me, Kareem? But every time I hit the shot, I'm looking at Kareem. He has his head down like this. So at halftime, I said, I'm going for 70 tonight. Give it to me. Phil was talking. I said, no, we ain't doing none of that you talk about, Phil Jackson. Triangle, schmiangle. Give it to me. I'm going to make Mr. Kareem Abdul-Jabbar look at me. Look at me, Kareem. Look at me! 
So after the break, Shaq cranked up the heat even more and dominated the game, leading the Lakers to a 20-point blowout win. The final score read 123-103. to Shaq's 61-point game was a historic moment remembered by a lot of people. It was the last time a player scored more than 60 points in an NBA game until Kobe Bryant scored 81 in 2006. For Shaq, it was the most memorable game of his career and shows exactly why Shaq is the legend that he is today.